Hello and welcome to the next episode of our blockchain plugin tutorials. So in the previous episodes we were talking about storing values inside the blockchain and how we can retrieve this value that is tied to some wallet. But now we need to talk about something more advanced, about authentication and how we can use wallets to verify ownership of said NFTs or information inside the blockchain. Um, or uh, with server authority. So how do we uh, do that? Right now we have this project, we got just another third person, we got this wallet app and we have already generated a, a wallet address that was covered in the previous tutorials. We have this color vendor that allows you to uh, claim uh, different colors and you can fetch those colors and you can assign them to your mesh. So yeah, great, that works. But now we want to make this uh, work with multiplayer and we want to, first of all, authenticate this wallet address and assign it to this character. So let's do that. Whenever we are working with uh, multiplayer, first of all, we need to make a new folder, call it gameplay elements, set a color, and we need a game mode. That is the first thing. So blueprint class, we can do game mode base or full game mode. I prefer uh, do the full game mode. And if you have full game mode, you can't use uh, the base version for uh, game state or anything else. So you either go with base or you go with the full. Let's go with full. Let's call it BP underscore blockchain game mode. And immediately for our world settings, we're going to set it as our default game mode. So in this game mode, we need to open it up. What we want to do, we want to set some defaults. So our default uh, player pawn is our BP third person character. So the one that we have already, nothing changes. For HUD, we don't need to do anything. Uh, and we need a player state. Now, a player state is a persistent object and uh, that is very important as it stores uh, a lot of information about the player. Uh, many In many videos you see uh, inside game mode, uh, people are iterating on controllers, but controllers, they exist only in space of the owner and in space of the server itself, while Player states are um, a lot more accessible. They are accessible from player controller directly. And they are, there is already an array of all player states that is accessible from game state. So let's do that. Let's call it BP block chain player state. Okay, and let's set it up here. And we need one more for the future. It's not going to be needed in this video, but we are going to need it, is game state. And like I said, we can't use the base. We must use the full one. BP blockchain game state. So game state uh, is like an object that is accessible from everyone, while game uh, mode is accessible only to the server. Uh, and you can call events on game mode from game state and you can trigger those events from basically any other object. So here we can change game state to our blockchain game state. Compile, save, and we're not changing anything. Everything is default in this game mode. Everything is default in every single one of those objects. And one thing we do want to do is go into our blockchain player state and we want to do some stuff. So, okay, let's talk about blockchain player state that we created. Player state is a very important object. <coughs> it is replicated with um, uh, always relevant to everyone. It's accessible from the player state as an array of uh, game state from from uh, as an array of player states. It's accessible from a player controller. It's in general accessible from anywhere. So you can always refer to it uh, either through uh, through the game state or or directly. So if this holds inform this holds information about the player, it holds information about the account. It doesn't necessarily hold the information about the pound that you are controlling. And this is also surviving throughout um, net travel. 
So if you are doing net travel, this object will be persistent uh, in between sessions, unless the new game mode is using a completely different uh, player state. But otherwise, player states uh, persist. Also, if you get disconnected from the server and you reconnect in certain amount of time, I think the default is three minutes, you will receive the same player state instead of getting created a new one because they are using unique uh, net IDs for players to identify them. So here uh, in player state is the perfect place to do our logic. So we want to authenticate and undisputably prove that we are the owner of a certain wallet. So let's do that. <coughs> let's run a begin play. And we want to start doing stuff on authority want to do an authority once and by the way player state if it exists it means the player controller exists as well and it's already initiated so it's already working the pawn not necessarily but the controller yes so on uh, authority we want to generate um, public key which is uh, wow well, no no, no. Uh, generate private key because private key is 32 bits long random uh, bytes and the random library we are using by the way it's open source uh, like you you get the full source if you buy the um, plugin uh, it's a very high level of randomness and it's very unpredictable so once we have this uh, private key we want to promote it to variable and we want to call it hash so this is not going to be used as key. We're not going to use it for any signatures or anything like that. We're going to just use it as data. So if this is successful, we create this and we say rep notify uh, owner only and set. Okay, so we now created on rep notify hash and we have this hash. So when we uh, replicate this hash, it also replicates on the server. In C++ it doesn't, but in Blueprints, rep notifies is called on the server. So uh, we might want to run it on the server if the server is also a um, local player. So we want to see controller. And want to get controller from, that is already accessible here. Uh, get controller mm. player state get player controller okay this one <clears throat> nulls uh, for remote clients. Okay, so we need to see if it's valid and if it is valid only then we want to see if it's a local controlled. It's local controller and player controller. Okay, this is controller controller. Okay, yes. And we want to see if we're both. And if we are both, then we want to do this. And only then, uh, you know what? We might even want to make this a function and say local controlled. And we want to do uh, another return node. If not valid, then no. And we want to make this pure because we're not modifying anything in this function, so we can use it as pure. So only if we are a local control player, even if we are the server, we want to do certain things. We receive this hash, and now we want to, uh, we need to first of all initialize the wallet. So we go to our wallet widget and we just copy stuff from here. So if wallet exists, then read wallet, if not, all of that. And we want to copy up to here, up to wallet key. And we need to also remember what's the wallet common name. Wallet common name is wallet. Okay, <laughs> easy to remember. So do this. Uh, make this a variable. Compile. Type in wallet with big letter, with big letter, okay. Um, <coughs> um, 
so if wallet exists then read wallet then we have the wallet key now wallet key we have to make and this is also local variable only for the owner because this stores the actual key that we are using to sign transactions and to do something we do not want to pass this key to the server we do not want to pass this key over internet in any form ever at all this is very important if this wallet is in control of the user, the user controls his NFTs and his everything. If this wallet is passed through server, it is not safe anymore. Uh, init wallet. Okay, so let's say it initialized wallet. Uh, and after we created this wallet, we want to make signature. Mm or sign, how is it called? I think it's sign, create signature. Okay, not make, but create signature. So we need our um, wallet key that we already have. This is the private key. And from this wallet key, we need to generate public key as well. And the public key, we actually do want to also check if it generated correctly. And we do want to call it as a variable and call it, uh, yeah, public key is good. And this is still uh, here. Okay. Um, now, after we've done that, we want to get our wallet key, which is the private key. And we want to generate, uh, we want to get the hash. And this hash just got replicated from the server on rep hash. So we know that we received a new value from the server, from the default value, which is empty. And we generate a signature. If this signature is generated successfully, we want to pass this signature to the server. So we need to go here and want to custom event. I want to say server verify identity. And we want this to be run on server reliably. And we need to pass two information. One is the signature. And second to verify our signature is the public key. Now, uh, our signature and public key both are bytes array, but there is a problem. If we generate it as a byte array, we can pass it only by reference. And we can't pass a reference from client to server because the reference will be voided, it will be empty. So this will be an empty string. Uh, I mean, uh, just empty array, uh, zero length. So we need to do a string single value and now we can pass by reference or we can pass by value and this is important so we do want to pass by value because we're calling rpc so we need to convert now the types so let's go back here and let's convert this to base 58 this is a very good standard for conversion it's already built in into into the wallet by the way base 58 is the standard used to generate addresses for uh, Bitcoin, because it's very good uh, when it comes to operations on bytes. And the second thing we need is our public key and also bytes to base 58. And now we need to call a server verify identity. So we are calling from local client, even if we are the server, we are calling from this local owner. And we're saying this is the signature. Yes, and this is the public key. And we're passing those, those two values. So now we need to convert base 58 to byte back again and we want to verify signature. So we got the public key here. We have the hash already on the server and we have the signature here. And this way we got this. So now, hmm,
yeah this way the lines are not crossing sorry my my autism is asking me to do that <coughs> so now uh, we can verify the signature and if we verify the signature that means that without exposing the wallet key we have proven that we do own the wallet key because we have a hash that is provided by the server and the client created a signature to verify ownership and we also have public key so having the public key now we can generate ethereum wallet address from public key and having that if it is successful we can get ethereum address and we can set variable i just uh, just promote variable and say clients wallet address and now we can run query on this wallet address to verify what nfts this client has and uh, what does it mean, uh, what is his privilege, and we can refresh this address on the server, and we can do proper things with this client address that it is provably his. So this address we want to be accessible to everyone and every object in the game, it might be relevant later. So make it replicated, and you know what, let's actually even make it rep notify. <clears throat> And on a rep notify wallet address, we can do stuff with this wallet address. So we can, for example, do a print text and we can format text. Inside this format text, we need to say realm uh, clients wallet verified address address. So this is address and we're going to say is server and we're going to say select string and if A then server, if B then client. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I have no clue if this will work. It should, but I don't really know. So let's test it on single player first. Oh, let's make this print a lot longer. Let's make this print. Oh, I don't need this, this, and I don't need this. Let's make this print text like 20 seconds. Okay. Hit. Okay. Server, client, wallet, verified address. Uh, okay, I am the server, so I have authority, so this is correct. Uh, and I had this other print, which was from here, a debug print, and it is our address. So we have proved it beyond doubt by using signature and verify signature that we are owner of this address. So let's test it on dedicated server. Hopefully it works. And... Client says, uh, client, client's wallet verified address, and server says that it is the same address. So this value was set with rep notify on server and on client. Uh, 